today we're doing some storming, but in standard and with sagas. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Abru About Nothing. And this week, we're playing my current favorite standard deck. We're Saga Storming in standard, and this deck is so much fun, and it's actually pretty good too. So let's talk about the Saga Storm, what the deck's trying to do, jump into some games, see it in action. So we're built around Rite of Harmony, this two-minute instant that we can flashback for four. This says when a creature or enchantment ETBs under our control this turn, we get to draw a card. And this is a card that is an absurd source of card advantage in our deck. What we really want to do is get down to Hollowed Haunting. So when we cast an enchantment spell, we get a spirit token and then play a Rite of Harmony the next turn and then cast sagas that also happen to turn into creatures like teachings of the Karen. So imagine this setup. We get to like turn five. We get our Hallowed Haunting down. On turn five, we write a Harmony. We cast the teachings of the Karen. That's going to trigger Hollowed Haunting. Hollowed Haunting is going to make a Spirit Token, which is going to trigger Rite of Harmony to draw us a card. Then Teachings of the Karen comes into play, and that's an enchantment, so that's going to trigger Rite of Harmony to draw us a card. And then the Token from his Teachings comes into play, and that's a creature, so that draws us a card. Essentially, it turns into a two mana draw three, and this happens again and again and again. With Jukai Naturalist, we can cast our sagas on the Jeep. Fable the Mirror Breaker does the same things as Teachings. Enchantment draws us a card. Tokens draws us a card. The other trick of this deck is we can get the timing right. So maybe we play a Teachings of the Karen on like turn two or turn three. If we get the timing right, the Teachings of the Karen's gonna flip around into a creature. It actually exiles and comes back into play. So that's gonna count as a creature coming into play. So a lot of times we're like casting Rite of Harmony on our upkeep before our Saga slips, so we drop that too. And that's the main plan of the deck. Rite of Harmony with Hallowed Haunting and all these Sagas that turn into or even make creatures, cast a bunch of them, build a huge board of spirits with Hallowed Haunting, give them all flying, swing in for like 60 damage and win the game. The other way we win the game is Katilda Dawn Heart Martyr. Normally, we don't even want to cast Katilda. We want to loot it away to like Fable of the Mirror Breaker, cast the enchantment form, the aura form, put it on one of our creatures. It's usually like a 10-10 flying lifelink or maybe a 20-20 flying lifelink in the late game. And we just one-shot our opponent and win the game. The other addition to this deck is Touch of the Spirit Realm. So I initially started playing a version of this deck that didn't really have any removal at all in the main deck. And I came across a really big problem, which is Shieldred in specific just absolutely ruined our day. Because we couldn't kill the Shieldred, and Shieldred drains us whenever we draw a card, we weren't able to combo off, so I had a touch of the Spirit Realm to the deck, and it greatly improved the Shieldred problem, and it can do some cool tricks. We can touch of the Spirit Realm channel mode to blink a flip Saga, like Teachings of the Karen or Fable the Mirror Breaker, to get it back in Saga mode, to trigger our Rite of Harmony and all that stuff, to draw more cards and reset it and go through the process again. Mana base wise, pretty typical standard stuff. 26 lands in all because we really want to hit our land drops. And then in the sideboard, we get a bunch of removal, some graveyard hate, uh, some anointed peacekeepers, Sarah Paragon to grind with the control decks. And that is Saga Storm for standard. That's our much of deck for this week. So let's jump into some games. See the absurdity of Saga Storm in action. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Today's video is brought to you by our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom. You can get all the Dominaria United cards you need and help support the show over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Much brew about nothing time. We are saga storming in standard. And that eh, sounds fine. I mean, no right of harmony, but got a decent curve. Got a bunch of sagas. Got enough lands to cast stuff. Seems a... Uh, Reasonable, I would say. Uh, yeah, let's just farmland go. Uh, boom. Teachings could mill a... Could mill a Rite of Harmony, which would be sweet. Eh, all right. Mills a bunch of stuff that doesn't really matter. Uh, boom. Mountain and Blood Tithe Harvester. Well, counter on the dork. Go attacking. The question's gonna be, hmm, we do have a land in the graveyard, right? Yeah, let's, I was wondering if we should wait and try to play Restoration after Hallowed Haunting, but I think we're just gonna do it this way. Getting a little ramp is fine. Rakdos should not be very good at killing Hallowed Haunting, and Hallowed Haunting is incredibly powerful. Opponent gets and hits us, sure, sure, sure. Probably discard this Carpusin Forest. Tenacious underdog. Sure, opponent passes. Well, 
Discard the forest. Get back a Jetmere Garden. Flip the saga. Play the planes. Hollow Haunting. I guess they hope we don't draw anything. Do we even want to attack here? Yeah, I think we do. If they block with the Tenacious Underdog, they either have to... Well, they basically have to kill the Kirin, or else we get to exile it next turn. Found it adapts. Well, now we get to start making spirits. Also, I already have one spirit, so... Would like to draw a Rite of Harmony the most. That would be the best draw, but we will take... Essentially, any enchantments are good here. Just anything to trigger our Hollow Dawning. All right, Naturalist is fine. Flip the Saga. Exile a Touch the Spirit Realm. Grow the Architect. Uh, Yeah, play a Naturalist. Get a Spirit. Do we try to play around Meat Hook Massacre in some way? I think we're going to. Let's just play the land and pass. We could run out another naturalist, but if we do, our opponent could meat hook and kill essentially our entire board. We'd get to keep the architect, but seems greedy because now we can just cycle. All right, looks like they are going to go on the meat hook plan. So this gives us a way of rebuilding. We are going to block with the naturalist here. Like there's, there's no way our opponent's not setting up a meat hook. So we might as well block and gain some life while we can. If they don't meal, then that's fine. We will <laughs> we will cash in the naturalist. I actually think our opponent probably shouldn't have attacked there. Well, let's cycle. See if we can hit an enchantment. Ooh, right harmony. Okay. Well, now we can try to do some things. Probably not explosive as it could be. Oh, another hollowed haunting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Next turn, right of harmony would be even better, but it's risky to wait. We could get hit by discard. I guess that's fine. Let's just play another hollowed haunting. I think this is fine. Hollowed haunting pass. If we get hit by discard, we can still flash back right of harmony. Our goal is to set up for. Ooh, all right. Invoke is annoying. Gonna make the turn slightly less good. All right, sure, sure, sure. A uh, bonnet passes. All right, let's draw a cheap saga that we can cast. Ooh, well, right of harmony. Fable the mirror breaker, draw three. As long as we hit an untap land, we can naturalist draw two more. This is where right of harmony is just so absurd. All right, there's the untap land. So we draw one from the hollow haunting token. We draw another from ETB of, oh, teaching the Karen's even better, of Fable the Mirror Breaker. Then we play a land that we teaching to the Karen. Another two mana draw three. We draw from hollow haunting. Oh, right, Harmony is so good in this deck. Trigger, Saga, Enchantment, draw. We spent five mana and drew six and put a bunch of stuff on the battlefield. <laughs> Not a not a bad turn. Not a bad turn. Here go, opponent. Do you have another Meat Hook Massacre? The idea of this deck is we're going to get Meat Hook Massacred and we're going to lose our board. But because of Rite of Harmony, we can just rebuild so effectively that it's kind of fine. And then we can set up for another Rite of Harmony turn, theoretically. Another Rite of Harmony turn after... We're just going to chump here. Another Rite of Ham Harmony turn uh, in two turns when these sagas flip is going to be the goal. Opponent, Graveyard Trail. Ooh, all right, they got a Rate of Harmony. That is annoying. Oh, we're gonna have a sweet turn. I mean, this is still fine, though. This is still, this is still gonna be decent. Opponent passes. Let's see. Counter on the Goblin. Loot away two lands. Oh, there's a Rate of Harmony, so we can still do it next turn. So next turn's the big turn. What do we do this turn? Wedding announcement. Mega Spirit. Touch the Spirit Realm. Mega Spirit. Get rid of Graveyard Trespasser. Discard Restoration of a Jano. Hit you a bunch. Make a treasure. Play the land. Draw. All right, so. Upkeep stop set. Essential for this turn. Well, we'll see. I mean, Pony needs a meat of master to just stay alive. Well, all right. We don't even have to get to the second big turn. <laughs> good enough. Good enough. So opponent's playing Rakdos. We gotta be gotta be careful of Shield Rid primarily, which is why we got these Touch of the Spirit Realms. Our opponent can also kill our stuff pretty easily. I think we go down a restoration of a Jano, go down a wedding announcement, go up a Sarah Paragon for the late game. 
Uh, do we want the fourth Catilda? Maybe? We could just go a circle of confinement. A little bit more removal. I don't think we're going to fight Tenacious Underdog with Lion Sash. That's probably a bit excessive. Yeah, all right, run it back. So opponent's probably bringing in Discard. We don't really got to change much. Like, in theory at least, the black decks are are the matchups that we want to be playing with this deck. Because it was Rite of Harmony turn. Like, you saw the power Rite of Harmony. The turn where it's just like, oh, we cast a couple enchantments. We draw six cards. That just undoes so much of the work the black decks do. The black decks want to one to one, one for one you into Oblivion. Uh, and then it, I guess Invoke Despair is like a three for one. But in general, it's a lot of one for one. Draw a card, kill a thing, draw a card, kill a thing. Being able to just refill your hand to fight through the Meat Hook Massacres and so forth is so big. Plus, like, because we have all these random creatures and enchantments, we actually don't care a... Oh, this is land heavy, but we're going to keep it. We actually don't care a ton about about Invoke Despair. We usually have, like, a 1-1 one, one we can sack and a random saga or whatever. All right, so this hand's a lot more land heavy than we want, but we can kill something on two, cycle on three... Hopefully find our action. And the deck does like getting its land drops. We just are missing any of our big payoffs. We'll see how good Sarah Paragon is out of the sideboard. Seems like it should be good late game. Oh, opponent's going to six. All right, opponent. Land. Fable the Mirror Breaker. One of our better draws here. Farmland go. Fable the Mirror Breaker is really good at turning land heavy hands into ideal hands. Opponent. Blood Tithe Harvest. Yeah, I think we just get rid of it. Not as good as getting rid of a Tenacious Underdog, but maybe they're thinking about Obnixilising or something. We kind of want to do something. Just doing straight up nothing this turn feels pretty bad. Bone at Bazes. Well, all right. Uh, Fable of the Mia Breaker. Definitely going to try to wait as long as possible for the Sarah Paragon. Like, we're not going to play this until we can get value out of it the same turn. All right. Infernal Grasp. Sure. But opponent's down to three cards. Shieldred would still be a concern. All right, that is a concern. This is going to hurt a lot. Uh, but we need to find a shielder to answer. Discard, discard. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Now what? I mean, I guess we just have to run out Katilda and hope? Ouch. Yeah, shielder is like the single best card against our deck because it shuts down all of our big combo turns. About it. So up. Oh my god, Invoke Despair. Yeah, not sure we can survive this now. Opponent hits us a ton. Down to seven, down to five, draw another land. Yeah, maybe we should have Paragon got back a land. That probably would have been better. Uh, but we're just in chump. Yeah, we're just dead. All right, sure. Well, uh, that shield were dealt like 20 damage because <laughs> we did not have an answer. Oh. <sighs> We have a bunch of answers in our deck. We just didn't draw them. All right, destroy evils in. At least a couple of them. Go down to the restoration, and maybe we got to go down the Paragon? Oh, the Paragon feels so good. We'll go down one Jukai Naturalist. We just, like, Shieldred is the one card that we have to kill. Because it shuts down our combo turns. Like, the, the damage as we draw cards just shuts down everything our deck does that's cool. So... It's kill Shieldred or lose to Shieldred. I think that's the, the one weakness of this deck is, is it's just so bad against Shieldred. The other way you can possibly beat a Shieldred involves involves uh getting a Katild on a creature to like gain 10 life or something. That's the other the other pseudo out. Well, we'll keep playing tap lands. I like that we have Hallowed Haunting. Hopefully. Opponent. Underdog or Blood Tithe Harvester. Looks like a Blood Time Harvester. It is nice that our Fable the Mirror Breaker looting is going to happen before Shieldred can come down this turn since we're on the play. Going to cash in the Blood Tithe Harvester and their own Fable the Mirror Breaker. Well, let's pitch a couple lands, draw a couple cards. Yeah, play the land Hallowed Haunting. We are really hoping our opponent does not play Shieldred here. We would like to do... Some... Yeah, this is awkward. We'll see. A bonus gets and hits us. Treasure. Land. And invoke despair. Well, we'll sack the Fable and the Mirror Breaker. Take some damage. Play another Hollowed Haunting. 
Well, this is one of those hands that could be good eventually, but is not really doing a ton right now. About it. If our opponent has another Invoke to spare, that's... All right, opponent has a Pilfer. I assume they take Fable the Mirror Breaker. We hope they take Katilda. We would like to have that in the graveyard, actually. Kind of getting punished for discarding those two lands. <laughs> the old discard two lands into draw no lands, miss land drops is, ugh, the worst. We especially need a green source. Like, we can do, like... We can draw so many cards with Rate of Harmonier, we could have if they had, uh, if we had a green source. Well, now we mostly just want to draw a land. The opponent, Blood Tithe Harvester. Makes a blood passes, not a land. Well, jeez. Oh, Touch the spirit realm. Make some spirits. Get rid of reflections, Akiki Jiki. And yeah, pass the turn. Oh, we are getting max punish for that land discard turn. We play 26 lands because the deck really wants to hit its land drop every turn. Opponents, wow, getting in. All right, I mean, I assume this means Meat Hook Massacre, but we'll see. Infernal Grasp of Spirit. Trades. Graveyard Trespassa. Can we draw a land? Can we draw a land? Can we draw a land? We cannot, but we can draw the third Hollowed Haunting. Well, considering the amount of mana screw we're experiencing, partly because of our own choices, <laughs> having th if we lose with three Hollowed Hauntings, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> Pwned it. Blood Tithe Harvester. I mean, every enchantment we're casting is making three, three, threes at the moment, and they're even bigger if some of our spirits are alive. Shieldred's still a bit of a concern. I think we survive Invoke here. Wow, just a bank buster. Okay, that's that's acceptable. I mean, we will double block. The more removal they spend on these replaceable spirits, the better. All right, this kind of works. One, two, three. Restoration of a Jano. Make a bunch of spirits. Oh boy, we've had to do so much work to replace this land. Get a Plains. Lanes. Teachings of the Karen. Make some uh, pretty big spirits. Mill some cards, make a spirit, and I mean, attack you for 18? Opponent draws a card, okay, uh huh. I mean, they're gonna need a few seething songs to <laughs> go with their Meat Hook Massacre here. Dark Rit, Dark Rit, Dark Rit, Meat Hook Massacre might work. How Dawning's busted. That card is busted. Busted, but look at what we've done. We've been mana screwed because we discarded those lands to Fable and like, we have like a million power. We have like 60 power or something, 70 power. It's kind of absurd. And then we get to discard the Katilda. Yeah, we don't even need to. Well, that was not like super optimal running and we just kind of crushed that deck. <laughs> ah, saga Storm, Saga Storm. Sweet, sweet. Much about nothing time. We are saga storming in standard this week. Doing some uh, right of harmony ing. A lot of action, but not enough lands. Yeah, this is a fine, a fine six card hand. We'll just put. Actually, we probably want naturalist. Let's put a restoration to the bottom. We can play naturalist, and if it dies, we can probably get it back with restoration anyway. Ooh, control a. I don't know how, oh, not control, just Esper, Esper midrange perhaps. Well, Duke, I naturalist. Be interesting to see if Denik ever, ever really does anything. Oh, and it goes attacking, no blocks. Down to 18 and, all right, kills a naturalist. We, we were prepared for that. Yeah, let's, restoration. I think this lets us, Discard the planes, get back naturalist, play wedding announcement and fable the mirror breaker next turn. Could really use a right of harmony. That's a big thing we're missing. Wedding announcement for our opponent gets in. It's a sure. Well, discard the planes. Oh! Cards in graveyard can't be the target of spells or abilities. Return target permanent. Okay. I guess that's a punt then. We discarded a land for no reason. 
Interesting. Well, I guess that's why people play Denik. <laughs> to shut down our restoration of Vigiano. The almighty restoration. That's actually pretty bad for us. We might actually lose as a result of that interaction. Who gets in? No blocks. Down to 14. Yeah, because we could have discarded that land to Fable the Mirror Breaker, so it actually, like, really hurts a lot. Opponent. Only has three cards in hand, which is good. And we're going to flip this, which is good. Maybe we can overcome. Opponent. Tenacious Underdog. Gets a token. Well, flip the Saga. Uh, what do we want to loot? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I guess we just keep this hand play the land go to combat attack get a treasure just takes it well play our wedding announcement touch the spirit realm is really sweet because we can use it to blink our flipped enchantment creatures and reset them so like once this fable of the mirror breaker flips if we want to we can flip back to the to the front side to do more looting make more goblins or if our opponent like tries to kill this architect we just will not discard second wedding announcement so our opponent stuff is gonna get big eventually and more tenacious underdogs is our opponent going to try to attack to draw cards if they do it's good for us Make some tokens, we untap, we flip, we draw land that we don't really want. Well, go to combat. Oh, these underdogs are big, 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 big. Oh, we really would like to draw with this wedding announcement, though. How do we do this? Touch the spirit realm. Get rid of the Denik. Pass the turn, make a token. Yeah, double wedding announcement is an issue. We get to flip ours next turn. Is it too late? Pwn it. Underdog, underdog. Block with reflection. Touch the spirit round to blink it. All right, so we get back reflection. We get the goblin. We get to loot away something. Well, loot away the land at a minimum. Teachings of the Kieran. Oh, I wish we had a right of harmony. Right of harmony would be so good. 10. That's not a ton of life. I'll go to combat. Attack, attack. Make some treasures. Just gonna take it. Interesting. Now, well, teachings of the Kieran. Come on, right of harmony. Right of harmony. All right, all lands. Pass. Draw a card. It's a land. Well, at least now our stuff is big enough to block. Opponent plays a land. I don't know if our opponent can really attack here. All right, well, they're thinking about it. All right, opponent gonna pass. Gets a token. Second wedding announcement. We draw, ooh, haunting. Uh, all right, so. Count around the architect. Flip the saga. Hollowed haunting. They could have a counter. Syncopate. So you do have a counter. Go to combat. Get in. Mega Spirit. Oh, it blocks. Blocks. Okay, so sure. Play the land. Touch the spirit realm. Get rid of an underdog. Pass the turn. Oh my god, what a draw. What a draw. That is probably the best top deck. Phone it attacks with everything. Yeah, this might actually make us lose. Could not find the right of harmony to refuel, and then our opponent had that syncopate to save the day. And we just have nothing going on now. Yeah, I think we're gonna lose this one actually. Hilariously. Phone it loots away a bunch of stuff. One card in hand. No, well, block, 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 block. Block, block. Actually, I guess we gotta block a, an underdog here. So do a bunch of blocking, kill a bunch of stuff, lose a bunch of stuff. Opponent should have the exact perfect card in hand. They did just like quadruple loot or something with this Rafine. Loot it into a removal spell, okay. Infernal Grass. Well, let's see if we can draw a real card. Oh, too late, oh my goodness. And then we didn't have an upkeep stop set, which is a total blowout. Well, I mean, oh yeah. All right, Right of Harmony. I think we're just dead though. We needed to draw the Right of Harmony earlier. Copy this, draw a card. 
It's a land. I feel like it's so clunky on Arena because Arena is just set up so horribly, but I feel like it is correct to to essentially always have an upkeep stop set with this deck. It's annoying to have to do that. I think that it's technically, technically the correct thing to do. All right, so opponent's just playing Esper stuff, Esper things. So we want to keep Rafine from going off. The Sarah Paragon could be worth it, but we need wedding announcements to keep up with our opponent's wedding announcements. Maybe we can go down one touch the spirit realm. Let's try it like that. So we're on the play for game number two. That's what happens when you don't find a right to harmony. That is, the deck is so... Those big card advantage turns built around right of harmony are so essential to what the deck wants to do. The, the pseudo storm turns. That when you don't find a right to harmony, things go a lot worse. Because that's the that's the card advantage of the deck. Like, that is the... That is the main source of card advantage to allow the deck to actually do sweet things. All right, we'll play first. I mean, we'll keep this. This might be a little... Well, I guess it could be a turn three right of Harmony turn. We'll see. We get to run out the Naturalist. If it lives, we might just go for right of Harmony next turn. Like, right of Harmony teachings draw two. Uh, boot it. Land. And I'm gonna kill the Naturalist. Okay. Well, in that case, we'll just Wedding Announcement. Keep waiting. Would like to hit a third land here land would be super sweet land lets us write a harmony teachings and draw with wedding announcement so we draw three opponent island wedding announcement all right land untapped oh jet mirrors garden all right it's a land but it's a little tapid yeah play teachings mill a bunch of stuff play the tap land go attacking Opponent takes it. We get a token. Hmm. Can we wait two turns? Opponent tap land. If we wait one more turn, then we can also get the teachings flip. Although then we lose the wedding announcement. Hmm. I mean, I guess we could just early Sarah Paragon get a land. Wow, opponent goes attacking. This might be a little meat hook massacre. Down 18. Okay. Kind of like a meat hook massacre. So we would, what, draw three? The other option is just Paragon get back a land. I mean, I guess we draw three again next turn and there'd be additional upside. Yeah, let's do it. Sarah Paragon. Replay Jetmir Garden. Make a token. Flip the wedding announcement. All right, upkeep stop set. Upkeep stop set. This is our hopeful right of harmony turn. The other upside of getting down Paragon is I think it pressures our opponent enough that they hopefully can't just sit on a counter this turn. And Rafine. Okay. I mean, this is fine because we're going to have a nice turn here. Opponent flips. Okay, so upkeep. Green, white. Right of harmony. draw restoration so we get to flip the saga draw a card naturalist from the graveyard draw a card we do kind of want to hit a land all right uh teachings is a karen draw two cards land untap white source untap white source we get to draw two okay there's untap white source i guess that's not that good we'd have to kill just a token which is much less exciting yeah i don't really want to kill a token all right so we'll just play the land pass the turn and now we have three harmonies in the graveyard so eventually we can just do these shenanigans again and do these shenanigans again i think we're in pretty good shape this hair paragon's been fine it's been good if we can get back another land next turn, that's even better. One of the nice things about the deck is while Hol uh, Hollowed Haunting is like <laughs> just busted. It's so, it's so insane. Uh, while that is nice, we don't technically need it for the deck to go off. The opponent connives, discards two underdogs. I mean, we're going to kill some stuff. At this point, I feel like we can rebuild better than our opponent can. So block, block, block. All right, opponent, what do you got, friend? Paragon's big enough that it survives Meat Hook, which is good. Definitely survives <laughs> Malicious Malfunction, which I've never seen anyone play before. Interesting. I mean, I guess it gets rid of Underdogs forever, which is kind of good. All right, there's a Meat Hook X2. 
then they kill the Paragon? No, oh, just a Denic. Okay. Well, counter on Paragon. Why can we play Fable? The oh, hmm. Wow, we could just go off again. Although getting rid of this Rafine is pretty appealing. All right, let's go Overgrown Farmland. Oh, we got a land in hand though. All right, so Circle of Confinement. Get rid of Rafine. Pay the one. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. From the graveyard. Jatmir's Gardens. Hit you with Paragon. Pass the turn. The Denic might actually be a good thing now. <laughs> our opponent can't target our Rite of Harmonies. Wow, Desperation Cycle. Yeah, next turn. Next turn. Upkeep stop set. Next turn's gonna be another big one, I think. Deniking in for a bit. Sure. Well, uh, Rite of Harmony. Upkeep. And opponent! <laughs> So we get to flip the saga. We get to cast the teachings of the Cairn from the graveyard. Like, we just, we draw like five cards or something. Like, something ridiculous and win the game. Well, that went pretty well. That went super well. Maybe we want even more Circle of Confinements against this deck. The Paragon was super good. Maybe we go down one more Katilda. Is that too greedy? You know, let's go one, down one Naturalist. Try it like that. Especially being on the draw, I think, having one more cheap removal spell is probably worth it. They could also have Shieldreds in their deck. Not that Zergle Confinement answers them, but we do need to make sure we can answer Shieldred. Well, this hand can answer a lot. <laughs> Doesn't do much else, but uh, yeah, you're not going to stick many permanents. I mean, as long as we draw lands, it's fine, because we had the wedding announcement and hollow dawning, so... I don't know about that exile-based sweeper in a tenacious underdog deck. Oh, an opponent mulliganed a bunch, too, and we draw the land. Okay, well, things are looking up. Opponent, tap land. Well, oh, another... Whew, another wedding announcement. Opponent, land, and... Tenacious underdog. Passes. Well, play the land, wedding announcement. Go. Drawing another land would be fine. Good even. Land number four would be helpful. Opponent. Land. Rafine. All right, so opponent gets to connive. Although we do have an answer to the Rafine in a circle of confinement. The opponent connives, discards the malfunction. No blocks. Land, maybe? No. Well, okay. Circle of confinement. Get rid of the Rafine. Pay the one. No attacks, just in case. <sighs> I don't think we're blocking, but I don't know what our opponent could have. If they play like a shield rid, there might be a world where we have to chomp. Destroy evil. Gets back the Rafine. Hits us. Well, this is getting obnoxious. Opponent connives. Discards a Rafine. Well, I mean, we're gonna take the beats. Yeah, we might be losing here just because we cannot hit our land drops. Opponent passes. Circle of confinement. Hit the Rafine. Pay the one. No attacks. Make a token. Flip the wedding announcement. Okay. Circle sticks for now. Opponent goes to combat attacks. I mean, we're going to block with everything. Uh, not being able to get land drops is tough. All right, underdog down for now. Okay, we finally draw land, which is huge. Play the land. So we can only do one thing. What is that one thing? Counters are a possibility. Underdog can be blitzed. I mean, we'd love the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but can we play around? You know what, let's, let's teachings. All right, Interceptor. Gonna bounce the teachings. Knives. Discards an Interceptor. Yeah, well, okay. Teachings returns, mills some cards. Make a token pass the turn. The opponent can blitz if they want to, but then they are completely tapped out. All right, well, I mean, kill the Interceptor. That's fine. And a wedding announcement. All right, opponent's tapped out. Can we draw another land? No. Naturalist is pretty good, though. So we get to Naturalist into Fable the Mirror Breaker. And it seems like maybe, maybe, maybe our opponent's mulligan is finally catching up to him. 
land. Underdog blitz, sure. I think we actually just block. Wow, 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 big attack. Well, in that case, we'll block the intercep interceptor. Drop to eight for the moment. Although we get to gain life back with this naturalist. Yeah, opponent gets to draw a card, flips. Or does not flip, uh, sacrifices rather. Opponent passes. Do some looting. Discard Katilda. Discard probably one Hollowed Haunting at this point. We have two. Flip the Saga. Go to combat, do some attacking. Get a treasure, gain back some life. All right, cut down, that's fine. Because now we get to Hollowed Haunting. Play the land, Naturalist. Wedding announcement for one man off the treasure. Draw a card. There's a right harmony. Oh, God. Okay. We'll see if our opponent makes us play this turn. Wedding announcement. I think our opponent's dead, though. We have so many enchantments. Our stuff has flying already. They need to... Yeah, they can't do it. Well, that was close. But the feasting on the black decks continues. Esper's a little tricky because they, uh, they have the counter spells. But, eh, got him. Sweet, sweet. We didn't storm off too much, but still, just play enough sagas, play enough hollowed hauntings, eventually get the win. Much more about nothing time. We are saga storming in standard, and that looks pretty good. We even got the uh, hollowed hunting. See what our opponent's up to. What variety of black deck are, are we on today? Rakdos, perhaps? Well, tap land, goo. Probably just going to, oh, well, definitely, okay. Now we're definitely just going to Restoration of a Jano to get a planes to make sure we get to Hollowed Haunting next turn because Hollowed Haunting's pretty good. We can even discard the teachings and get it back for free. Opponent, would you like to Liliana's Field of Ruin? Oh, you got plenty of basics, so that's fine. Graveyard Trespasser. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Wait, one, two, three. Oh, this is really good. Okay, so we discard the Naturalist. We get back the Naturalist. We play the land, we play the hollowed haunting. Teachings of the Kirin. Make a spirit. And your go opponent. It's uh, not a bad, not a bad turn, turn four, turn four. Also, we missed a, we missed a game. We played mono black, but I had my mic muted. <laughs> so I don't think I can use it. Wow, opponent's getting frisky. I think we just take it. Actually, you know what? I think we block with a spirit. We want to make it so if our opponent meat hook massacres, they lose the graveyard trespasser. This does cost us a spirit, which is growing our spirits, but at this point, like, we have a second hollowed haunting. Our opponent is likely not super long for this world. I think our opponent was planning on meat hook massacring, but that attack, like, really messed them up. Okay, they open then a braided instead. And passes. Well, um. Counter on the dork. Flip the saga. Hollowed haunting part two. Hit you for three, play the land past the turn. Oh, and this was, uh, is without right of harmony too, about it, land. Now they can't meet hook away the architect. Soul transfer, sure. I mean, if opponent's gonna try to one for one us, it's not going to work. We have two hollowed hauntings. There's no way you can one for one through this down to 16. Oh my goodness, we draw the land. Okay, flip the saga. Wedding announcement, make some spirits. Land Fable the Mirror Breaker, make some more spirits. And opponent! I'm starting to think this deck's just like busted. <laughs> I thought it was super fun and super good, but now I'm leaning towards busted. Um, all right, destroy evil to deal with shieldred. One of the nice things about everyone playing black decks is you can sideboard the same way basically every time. <laughs> it's all some var variety of the same thing. Rakdos, Esper. Mono black. Unfortunately, it doesn't lead to a great diversity of ma- Like, I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm curious. Let's say we play five matches and it's like Jund, Esper, Orzov, Mono black, Rakdos or something. Does that feel diverse or does it feel not diverse? Does it feel diverse because technically those are five different archetypes and each deck is gonna have, you know, different colors of cards? Or does it feel not diverse because every deck is probably playing like Underdog, Shieldred, Liliana, Meat Hook, like the 20 black cards that every deck plays. 
curious where other people are all are on that i think it's similar to the modern the modern question like are decks diverse because there's a lot of playable decks or do they feel not as diverse because all of those decks are are built around modern horizons two cards asking the big oh, stop drawing lands asking the big questions here on Munch brew this hand's more okay than great if we keep drawing lands it's bad all right there's the underdog oh god more lands all right well planes go can we please stop drawing lands opponent hits us oh my god another one oh well the flood is the flood is real the flood is real get a planes i mean we kept a land heavy hand to start with unfortunately we've drawn a land every single turn of this game take numa and soren takes up graveyard trespasser well discard the land get back the land play a land touch the spirit realm get rid of the underdog the problem is we just we don't have any action we have literally 12 cards nine lands whoo well and it makes a vampire and it's sushi the worst katilda ever well i mean we're gonna play it because we have nothing else to do pass the turn the braids katilda and then exiles it yeah we might be dead here just because of the flood i mean i guess it's arguable well actually with well, maybe we should have just mulliganed it opponent trespasser eats katilda and another land uh-huh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten out of fourteen that's impressive i mean what was our opening hand five lands five lands the problem is we just kept drawing lands at that rate i'm curious we are a 26 land deck 14 10 that still has to be way yeah about two percent of the time give or take all right run it back we got that out of the way all right we get to play first this hand if anything has the opposite problem of the last one which is we're a little light on lands although we could maybe get off to an explosive start here turn two naturalist turn three restoration gets our land we don't have any big payoffs though could use a well we need a land or two and now we're looking for rights of harmonies and such but at least we get to do things this game last game we did not uh well cut our pools in forest you well uh Igiano and naturalist all right so we need the naturalist to live or we need to draw land and then we're kind of in business opponent take numa and removal spell number one a braid well we draw the land which is nice so we will just restoration of a jano snag a planes opponent probably wants a graveyard trespasser here Ooh, oh a hearse okay that also kind of works are we exiling no how do we want to do this opponent has two lands what are we afraid of i kind of want to touch the spirit realm so we don't want to discard the land all right let's just discard a naturalist get back a naturalist just kidding so teachings of the kirin mill some cards teachings of the kirin well hopefully our opponent doesn't go land meat hook massacre that would be a bummer oh we milled a ridiculous amount of lands <laughs> land meat hook massacre yeah they wow okay well we're seeing the one way that the black decks sort of have a chance against us which is to run uh run really well we would love to find a right of harmony that would be spectacular opponent exile in the graveyard Ooh. So we probably wait one more turn right this turn we draw one and then we could flicker draw two yeah next turn's the turn so flip the saga put an upkeep stop for next turn pass the turn the opponent going to pilfer jeez that's a good draw that's a really good draw we let it go they get to take our right of harmony wow not taking that's going to come back to haunt our opponent wow i don't know if they realize how this works because now we get to upkeep right of harmony yeah i i think our opponent should have taken right of harmony and then exiled it because this is gonna really hurt them we had to flip both sagas so we draw two from that 
And then if we don't draw anything else, we can touch the spirit realm to flip one of the sagas and draw two more. So we should be able to draw four at least this turn. Naturalist. Oh, five actually because of architect. Flip it, draw a card. Yeah, right. You always got to get rid of the right harmony if you can. It's so ridiculous in this deck. So now we go to combat. We hit you with the architect. We draw from the token. And then we touch the spirit realms. I guess I could have removal. Do we just wait? One, two. You know what? Let's just play naturalist. I think that's fine. This is one less card drawn, but I think it's. I think it's safer. So we draw for the naturalist. Found I can exile a card. Sure. Play Jetmere's Garden past the turn. All right, so we have refueled. Do they have Meat Hook Part 2? This unlicensed Earth is annoying. Tenacious Underdog, sure. And kills the naturalist. Opponent passes. Ooh, wedding announcement's nice. Well, play wedding announcement. Go to combat. Do some attacking. Grow our... Grow our sagas. Now, opponent crews. I kind of want to just touch the spirit realms. Okay. Not sure what the crewing does, but sure. Oh, it goes to 15. We play a land. Dodge the spirit realms. Get rid of the hearse. And draw a card. All right, we got through the graveyard hate. That was such a weird... <laughs> that was such a weird line for our opponent to crew and then tap before blocking, but I think what they want to do is crew and then... and then tap, but it didn't work out that way. Found it passes. Whew. Well, um... Go to combat. Do some attacking. Eat your stuff. Grow our dorks. Opponent. Blocks drops to 13. Well, let's just Sarah Paragon. Uh, yeah, replay teachings. Would like to mill into another right of harmony would be the best. Draw a card or find another right of harmony. Paragon's big enough that it doesn't get got by another meat hook, Gilly. It's bound at land. Trespasser, sure. I mean, this isn't even like an especially great draw for our deck. Oh, uh, well, grow the Paragon. Play a land. Go to combat. Do some attacking. Eat a hollowed haunting. Grow the Kirin. So it seems like our opponent's trying to set up a meat hook massacre. That's gotta be what they're playing towards. Oh, Fable the Mirror Breaker. I mean, I think this should hopefully give us lethal next turn. About it. Because we can discard the Katilda. And if our opponent's tapped down, that should just one shot. Burn down the house. Yup. That is fine. The opponent gains a bunch of life. Opponent's got sweepers for days and they just aren't good enough. Cycle of land. Is it game? Oh my god, right of harmony. Okay, new new plan. New plan. Uh, we're gonna draw a lot of cards. We could probably win here, but I would rather draw a lot of cards. <laughs> Let's do a little storming. <laughs> opponent just scoops it up. They know what's happening. Got him. All right, well. <laughs> The winning continues. Ah, oh, this deck's so fun. Oh, this has been the most fun I've had playing standard in a while. I enjoy the standard, even though you literally play against a black deck every round. Or I, that's an exaggeration. There's been four rounds since we've started recording this deck. One of them we got missed because of the mic issue. It's all been black decks, but thankfully we crush them and we do sweet things. So yeah, not bad. Much more about nothing time. We are Saga Storming in Standard. I do love saying that, Saga Storm in Standard. So much alliteration. Uh, Jamir's Gardens go. Sand looks pretty good. Got the Hallowed Haunting. Not doing much for the first couple turns, but... Ooh, Jund A. 
John might actually be the toughest black deck because they get uh, the most enchantment removal. And enchantment removal is good against us. Although, in theory, we can still draw enough cards that it should be fine. Blood Tithe Harvester. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess we just do some ramping. Restoration of a Jano, get a Plains. So next turn we get down Hallowed Hunting, and then we start casting enchantments. So we could use a Rite of Harmony. That's the biggest thing we're missing. Ooh, all right, that's actually kind of bad for us. Taking the Hallowed Hunting. Main deck Durasse. Is that a thing people are doing now? All right, yeah, it takes Hallowed Hunting. Plays a Haunted Ridge, goes attacking. Well, that does slow us down quite a bit. I guess it's Fable the Mirror Breaker time then. Discard the forest, get back the forest. Fable the Mirror Breaker. I'll play the planes past the turn. Volt Surge. Oh, so they're uh, okay, so they're like Recto Sacrifice, I guess. I was thinking it might be Jun Wind Grace. Jun Wind Grace seems like that might be the the toughest black deck for us. Sacrifice equals ain't shook <laughs> but the harvester gets in uh all right so we get to do some looting i think we just discard both katildas yeah discard both katildas flip the saga well fable the mirror breaker number two and I think we're just gonna discard the naturalist. I don't really care about the naturalist at the moment. All right, opponent, how much removal do you got, friend? The answer is at least some more. All right, more removal, opponent. Thinking about using the blood token. All right, uses the blood. Okay, so they are Gen Wind Grace, oh boy. All right, Titan Industry, eh? Yeah, losing this uh, Hallowed Honey might be a problem. Uh, opponent goes to combat. All right, down to 11. Cruelty of Gix, okay. Gonna reanimate the Titan, yeah, this might get us. This might actually get us. All right, Titan of Industry comes back. I assume it's blow up the Loot Saga and make a 4-4. Four, four? Oh, that duress, so brutal, so brutal. Yeah, all right, well, cycle the Jetmere's Gardens. Yeah, that's tough, that's real bad. Into another land, which is pretty bad into even more lands, which is even worse. Well, I mean, at this point, we're dying, so play this, play this on the goblin, play a land, can't attack because it has reach. If our opponent can kill our goblin, then we're just super dead. Titan Industry, good card, that's a good card. Goes to combat. Down to four. We gotta make this. Goblin big enough to attack through Titan of Industry. Meat Hook Massacre, well that's not happening, is it? Okay, Meat Hook Massacre. Yeah, I think that does it. Well, that was a good Chundra. Right, a Harmony, not gonna help us here. Well, have we met our match? Have we finally found a black deck that has some chance of beating us? Maybe. We'll bring in the Lion Sashes. We'll bring in the Besaju. The problem with Titan of Industry is, sure, we can destroy evil it, but does that even do anything? We'll try the Sarah Paragon. Yeah, this is this is a tough one, because if you look at Jun, they just are overflowing, kind of incidentally, with ways that can kill enchantments. That makes us the one black deck that's actually tricky. Titan of Industry does it. Uh, Unleash Inferno does it. And then once you get to sideboarding, Terra Sunders, plus this build, I don't even know. <clears throat> I feel like this might be a, a less enchantment removal heavy. Yeah, a lot of decks actually play the Terra Sunders in the main. So then you have four of them on top of the Titan of Industries, on top of the Unleash the Infernos. That's a lot of a lot of ways to accidentally kill enchantments. This is like the one deck in standard that can actually do that. Yeah, I think we actually mulligan this. All right, here we go. Uh, forest to the bottom. Well, we'll see. Keep mulliganing, opponent. <laughs> Keep on mulliganing. Land go. I wonder if that would have went differently if our opponent didn't have the, the random main deck duress. Tap land. Uh, well, land and naturalist go. Do we have removal spell number one? Looking at the naturalist. Okay, well, that's a Terra Sunder out of hand at least. 
Play the land, restoration of a Jano. Grab a planes. We need to get to a position where we can draw some Rite of Harmony cards. Opponent, land. Be below the meal break, huh? Yeah, discard the planes. Get it back. Play the Besaju. Touch the Spirit Realms, the Goblin. Oh, we might have to go with the really, really bad Rite of Harmony next turn. The Rite of Harmony draw one. Hope we draw into another enchantment we can play. The bone ain't gonna do some looting. Wow, just discard the land, okay. As the Wind Grace. Gets back a land. Well, we gotta go for it, right? A harmony. Hopefully we run well. We need to Oh, we draw the Hallowed Haunting. So we flip this, draw a card. It's a planes. This feels so bad, but touch the spirit realm. Get rid of the wind grace draw card. Play the land past the turn. Yeah, that was not the turn we were hoping for. I mean, it was okay, but it was not, ah, not big. Not as big as we needed. Found it, more Fable the Mirror Breakers. Ay, 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 ay. The other problem with this enchantment removal is they're gonna get it back eventually. They're gonna blow this up and get it back eventually. It's very temporary removal, oh God. Go to combat attack, yeah. Make a token. Opponent takes it. The problem is they can copy the Blood Tithe Harvester and kill it anyway. Hallowed Haunting. Play the land past the turn. All right, let's have some uh, some bad Jun running, please. Opponent gets to double loot. Discards a land, draws a card. I mean, they have Titan of Industry mana, and they get to kill our Architect. Makes a blood, kills the Architect. Mm-hmm. Well, this makes it less likely that we're getting Titan of Industry this turn. Goes attacking, makes a treasure. We really need to hit, uh, I guess an enchantment or that we can cast and draw cards. Oh God. Oh, wow, it keeps getting worse by the second. Fun to get seen our right of harmony. Oh, the blowouts, the blowouts. Well, cycle is Jatmir's garden. I mean, Fable's good, but not gonna win us the game here. Fable the Mirror Breaker, make a spirit. Pass the turn. Well, thankfully, Jund isn't one of the one of the most heavily played black variants, but it does feel tough. This is the this is the one that actually feels a little tricky. Found it flips the saga. I don't think there's anything we can draw to get out of this. That graveyard trespasser. That bone just had every every single thing they need. Everything. Bone it gonna copy the blood dying harvester. Losing that right of harmony was was real bad. The infinite removal is also annoying too. Goes attacking. Makes a treasure. It's almost like our opponent's playing a build of Jun that is designed to. <laughs> to beat our deck that is not really a deck. About it. Hits us to 13. You got the Titan of Industry? My opponent passes. We draw not much. Um, well, discard. We'll keep the restoration into another land. Yeah, we're just hard locked here. Yeah, let's cycle. This restoration doesn't do it, they just gets killed. Opponent also has infinite blood, so, oh my god. More lands, yeah, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna, more lands, holy mother, whoa, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 out of, 12 out of 18, all right. Well, it happened, it is possible for our deck to lose. We gotta hit the worst matchup and we gotta draw every land, but apparently it can happen. So what do we learn this week about Saga Storm in Standard? And overall, video match-wise, only four matches, because this deck plays some really long games. Like, sometimes we gotta draw through literally our entire deck before we eventually overwhelm our opponent and win the game. So only four matches. We ended up going three and one overall, which is a fine record, although the deck is actually way better than that. If we look at untapped.gg stats for the deck, uh, we can see overall Harmonic Sagas, 
15 and 7, 68% match win percentage, but it's actually better than that. After switching to the current build of the deck, the version 3 build, uh, we are 88% win percentage, 7 and 1, so still a small sample size, but this deck is super, super good. In the early days of the deck, I mentioned didn't have any answers to shield it and kept losing to it, so that's why we ended up making some changes to get to the current versions of the deck, but the current version of the deck seems super, super legit, and it is just so much fun to play. You got to see it go off. You got to see all the cool things this deck can do, which is just, it kind of does feel like a storm deck. You draw so many cards and have these huge combo turns where you go from doing very little to all of a sudden you cast like three or four sagas in a turn with a hallowed haunting out. And all of a sudden you have like, 50 power on the battlefield, and then you get a Katilda back from the graveyard, and you one-shot someone and gain a ridiculous amount of life. So I actually think this deck is one of the answers to the black decks in standard. We did see the downside to the deck. There is one black deck in specific that is like the natural hoser to our archetype, and that is Jund. Uh, we feast on Mono Black and Orzhov and Esper, any of those black decks, but Jund in specific, oh my god, that matchup is almost unwinnable for our deck, I think, because they just happen to have like 12 cards that can blow up enchantments. They have like Titan of Industries. They have the Kicker Exile Based Removal Spell. They just have so many ways they can blow up artifacts and enchantments. So it just naturally hoses our plan. So Jund is a tough matchup. But other than that, I feel like this deck actually has a pretty good matchup against basically everything. It's really good against the non-Jund Black decks. And then because of Katilda, it's actually pretty good against Aggro decks too. Like normally against Mono Red or something, they get off to this fast start. And then eventually you're just like, oh, Katilda, put it on my thing hit you for 12, gain back 12 life, and they just can't win from there. So I think this deck is actually just super well positioned. More importantly, it is just so much fun to play. If you decide to pick it up, all I will say is make sure to have an upkeep stop set. Arena doesn't really like late upkeep stops. If you try to add it too late, it's gonna skip over your upkeep. And you really, really want to have upkeep stops so you can write a Harmony upkeep to catch all your flipping sagas. You can also try to like go into full control as your sagas go to flip. Even that's a little bit risky because you really want to maximize your card draw with right of Harmony. You don't want to miss a saga flipping because that's negative one card that you could be drawing. But you got to see all the awesome stuff this deck can do. So if you're looking for something different to play in standard. I would highly recommend this deck. It is super fun. It is interesting. It draws a ton of cards. It beats the top decks in the meta. So if you're looking for something spicy and standard, give Saga Storm a try. Anyway, that's been our Much Abroved for this week. Saga Storm for standard. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.